And it came to pass that I had a friend. Mighty friend. Gifted of God. He was a prophet. In our company. I was the master of the scriptures in our company. I was the one that was responsible for capacity building and training. I had eyes for the book. But he was the prophet. In fact, he comes to fellowship with a big Bible, but he never opens it. He comes with big, just a big, uh, big Bible. If you give him time, he will just come and put the Bible on the book. And then he will look like this. He would like it. One day he told me. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. I remember, you know, my dad worked here as the head of civil service. And those days, the governor was benevolent and he decided to give lands to all his top functionaries with certificate of occupancies. And because I am the only one staying in the city now, my mom gave me the certificate of occupancy of the land that was given to my dad as an inheritance, that I should go there and build something on it so that my dad would look down from heaven and be pleased. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it came to pass that I received a phone call that someone was building on the land. <laughs> I went to check the thing out, and a relative of mine had sold it to someone. So before I was, before we begin the legal battle, I had to give the feedback to my mom. She's our father and mother now. So I said, well, you see, there's a challenge here. Something strange is going on on my land. And she told me something. She said, my son, don't fight for land. Because she knows that if we start that fight, it will take a long time. A very long time. She said, don't fight for land. When your father was a public servant in Benue State, he did not steal money. Because of that. Any land you need to do anything God has told you, you have it. Are you with me? So the fight ended. I even delivered the certificate of occupancy. My inheritance now was a blessing. And indeed, uh, that all trans has come to pass. It, in fact, it started coming to pass when God moved somebody to bring the land that we are building the embassy upon now. We just bought to add, but most of it was a gift. And then I remember my mother's words. Wisdom is profitable to direct. There was a challenge. But the wisdom that came through the utterance of my mom is, don't fight. You have legitimacy for establishment in that territory that you are in because your father did not steal money from the government while he was in power. Are you with me? She was saying, step into the inheritance of his goodwill. For the Bible says that a good, good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. And the meaning of that scripture is not that a good man will now build a house for his son to inherit. You, you, you people still remember those houses they built in the 70s? Do you still remember how it looks? I don't want to inherit that, please. <laughs> you, some of you know what I'm talking about. That's, is, that is not relevant. That, those houses are not relevant <laughs> The Bible means that, the scripture means that a good man, as he's doing his act of goodness and righteousness, is accumulating spiritual virtue that will power his children's children. Okay, you don't believe me? Right, let's flip it this way. What of a Anizimo? Anizimo also leave it an inheritance for his children's children. But that inheritance, has, you know, is valid inheritance. Just that he was serving a spirit afflicting people he was accumulating inheritance the implication of his devotion you will need four generations to understand it fully do you understand what i'm talking about so it's not about building physical houses and handing over to your children that's good anyway but i tell you 1977 houses no <laughs> i will sell it off <laughs> it's, it's it will be a mockery for me to hand that out and say all right um do you understand it now so but he, he walked in righteousness so my mom now gave me the blessing that is accruable to such works of righteousness as my inheritance. And there was no need to fight, therefore. And subsequently, it was obvious that the path that she released me into was more profitable 
than the part I wanted to contend for. Wisdom is what is profitable to direct. And this wisdom is accessible by spirit. It is him that will take away all the distraction and the confusion and show you where to set your foot. And in that place, you will not sink. I was walking somewhere in Lagos and there was this lady. She has a perfume. Strange perfume. She goes about from office to office selling the perfume. But there is a kind of perfume she wears. Those of us that have been born again for long, we can test spirits. We have been, we are around, we are been around for, for long, so we can test. There are some things I can't teach. I just know it in the spirit. Every day, this lady will come and sell perfume in my office. And I've told her, this is your perfume. I will never use it, but you'll still bring it the next day. I'm selling perfume. <laughs> well, we continue the rehearsal. Bring perfume. I say, I will never buy this perfume. It's okay. Maybe you'll change your mind tomorrow. She'll bring it tomorrow. I think it happened, I think it happened for like six months. And then one day after a long fast, when that episode had ended a long time ago, I was going to the bathroom to take my bath and then I had a vision. <laughs> Many variations. And I saw the future. The future that would have happened if I bought her perfume. If I had taken out of her stock, they say, okay, I want to hmm? test it. Because some of you... You don't want to buy, but you will test. <laughs> I didn't test. God now showed me what would have happened to me if I had bought. So it, I, I can't tell you why I felt irritated about that lady. Because in that establishment, humanly speaking, that was the most beautiful lady. All the, I'm talking about the, an oil industry, you, oil facility. All right? They, they have so many staff. They have staff in maintenance, staff in operation, staff in accounts, staff in gas, staff. This is a public place. So all of those people hail the lady as the beauty of the island. And they want to have time with her. But every morning she comes to my office with perfume. When hunters are looking for your soul, may your eyes be open. <laughs> the name of Jesus. It was after a long while when she stopped coming that the Holy Spirit now showed me what would have happened if I picked one of the perfume. Maybe because she troubled me so much and then I just, okay, let's just, there's money. Let, let's stop this lady from coming. That would have become a trap. And then I saw what my life would have been if I had followed that road. But I can't tell you why I felt irritated. It was the government of God that was standing heavy on my life and it orchestrated a redemption. You see, you see, we don't have all the details of how you survive to become 32 years. How you survive to become 42 years. How you survive become, to become 26 years. We don't have all the details. If you know how many times destruction. And this destruction that is coming to seek your end is empowered by a, a certain iniquity that is in your bloodline. Because of that, it has at least two windows to take a sniper shot at your destiny. And then when it came the first time, the Holy Ghost put you under pressure to go on fast, fasting for seven days dry. While you were weak on the bed, there were angels that were holding you in the spirit. So when he took the first sniper shot, he missed that shot. And he knew it was only one left. So he waited for the time when you begin to enjoy. You have water bed and you want to lie on it. Then he finds that moment to strike. And then suddenly, you now feel like going for night vigil, 18 nights. And it was on the 18th night he scheduled. Because if you, if you read the book of Esther, you'll find that the occultic people, they, they have a schedule for attack. Satan doesn't just wake up and say, Let's kill him. There's a schedule. There's a program that will inform Satan when it will be more, more effective to bring about an assault. The witches can rest from your home for two years just to look for that, shed, that window which is in keeping with the schedule. And you are not, the hunter is always wiser than the prey. The prey is looking for grass. He will go like this, kick something and look for grass. Meanwhile, the hunter is steady. Imagine somebody with a, with, with, with a revolver looking for you for two years. And then when they fail, you would think, is it because you are powerful? The Holy Spirit messed up a lot of... You see, with the Lord, there is mercy. And with him, there is what? There is plenty of sweet. All of these facilities are available in the Holy Ghost. But that deliverance you experienced is a product of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? That prosperity you came into because you received direction from the Holy Spirit and you implemented it and began to work. 
all those expressions that found manifestations in your life because you were under the influence of the spirit all those expressions are spiritual oh you cannot kill a man that the holy spirit sent you can kill him because his driving force will protect him and so jesus knew his driving force even though he was going into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he knew the outcome as long as the intensity of this driving force was in place what are you afraid of i have a driving force Meanwhile, before we went for the crusade in Jalingo, there were reports of the upsurge of witchcraft in the territory to be tempted of the devil. But the driving force said, the way is to Jalingo. And when we got there, we had a combat. It's the testimony of the combat I just shared. It doesn't matter what stands in your way. If your driving force is full bar, it means that thing standing in your way will soon become a road. Ah, it will become a highway. Ah. So the Holy Ghost will bring you to a point when you trust your spiritual senses, he becomes your driving force. When he's your driving force, sometimes he will lead. Has, has this ever happened to you before? Because it happened to me. I woke up. He said, don't use bus today. Just walk. And I was walking. I didn't know where I was going. And then it was in that walk I met someone that was looking for me for how many days? It was a foolish walk. My understanding was unfruitful. But I knew my driving force was propelling me and he did not care to give me details as to why I was walking around. And it came to pass that I found the person looking for me for many days. He didn't have my phone number. He was just moving around. And the great one sent me from, oh my God. Has it happened to you before? That's when you know you have a driving force. When your understanding is fruitful, but you know the direction. That's the kind of journey that Abraham had to walk. When God called him from the known into the unknown, what was propelling him was a driving force. Go to a land that I will show you. The reason why the activists of God, the works of faith, are diminishing in our time is because men no longer have a driving force. Where we, not, where we do not know men by the sight of the eyes. Where the witness of the Holy Spirit becomes the facility that drives us. And many things can happen to us in a day. Things we never anticipated because they were only known to the Holy Ghost who was locked on our hearts. And he found a way of ordering our steps into it. Have you not heard that scripture that says the steps of the righteous, they are ordered by God. Not the head. Many times the understanding will be unfruitful. But when you have a driving force, it means you have found your navigator. You are no longer sheep without shepherd. You are on route to destiny. God will never give you the anointing to heal people's bodies that are afflicted if you don't know how to control your anger. Because that same anointing that can heal bodies can break bodies. If you can control your anger, it means that you honor the spirit more than the gift. And so you imbibe the nature of the spirit. And the nature of the spirit becomes your handle in being under control in the midst of so much endowment. Many times we take off like a tornado on the platform of the spiritual and we forget the spirit. The confusion I see today. And I see people that were once in deep relationship with the Holy Ghost that took off like a tornado. What you will find is an empty vessel after a while. And there are so many empty vessels in our generation. People that had something with God. And when you hear that empty gong sound, the sound is coming out of emptiness. The person is still on the pulpit. But he can make no sound from heaven. And it came to pass that I had a friend. Mighty friend. Gifted of God. He was a prophet in our company. I was the master of the scriptures in our company. I was the one that was responsible for capacity building and training. I had eyes for the book. But he was the prophet. In fact, he comes to fellowship with a big Bible, but he never opens it. He comes with big, just a big, uh, big Bible. If you give him time, he will just come and put the Bible on the pulpit. And then he will look like this. He will look like this. One day he told me, that if he doesn't see a vision, he can't move until God has shown him a vision. That's when he moves. I said, you are beginning to depend on your gift because we depend on faith or we depend on the word of God. Don't build your life on a gift. Build your life on the word of God. He said, I'm saying this because I'm the scripture master. I'm, I'm using my strength to intimidate him that he has his own economy that he operates with. And in that economy, he operates by visions. I said, I wish you luck. But if I didn't learn anything from Bible school, they told us again and again until our ears were dull of hearing. Stay in the world. 
I had stayed in the world to, to, a, to the point I almost crammed the New Testament so that I will, the world will stay in me, not just. And he was accurate. He could see the future. Most of the prophets we see today are not like this prophet I, I speak of. He was accurate. He could see the future. And that was why his gift was brilliant. And one day he came. He came to me. I was a youth copper then. We were in a fellowship like this. And uh, I knew that the anointing had come on him to prophesy. So I finished my teaching. I gave him um, the stage. And when he came up, he began to prophesy, prophesy. He's accurate. If it's that one, he's accurate. Then he came to me after the service and said, there was something he did not say. That I'm going to have a job. I'm going to work for the government. And I'm going to prosper. But when I prosper, I should remember him. I said, I'll remember After that utterance, because I was not planning to, I was planning to go into full-time ministry. He came again. We were in a fellowship like this. He said, ah, that he's in three steps. And I've accomplished the first step. And the first step is my education, that I will never go to school again. As he was saying that, I, I cost him. <laughs> I wanted to be a professor, for God's sake. Oh my God. Imagine me in a, in a, in a lecture room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say I don't. Yeah, in my heart, oh, as he was saying, I said I don't believe this one. I don't believe it. <laughs> Until I came, some of our people are influential in, on the campus, so I asked one of them to help me get admission because I know I can get it. I have the influence to get it, and they secured the admission. And the day I looked at my name on the list, my peace left me, my peace. And then God now spoke to me by Himself and said, "Did I not see?" See, I didn't know you were the one saying it was that man that said it. <laughs> uh, God disciplined me seriously for despising that utterance. But by wisdom, I was able to restitute that position and the mercy of God came upon me again. This is the man I speak of. He took off on the tangent of that gift to his destruction. When we're building capacity to believe the word of God and to begin to live another our steps by the word of God, he was living by a gift. He began to operate based on the spiritual. Do you understand that? A time came, his prophecy started becoming wrong. When he brought the lady that he wanted to marry, we that were building ourselves, but I was not gifted, but we that were building ourselves in the scripture, we could pick that this was not his wife. And when we challenged him, he said, Let's be truthful to ourselves. If there's any seer here, I'm the seer. I'm the one. I'm the one. That's the one God gave me. So in matters like this, it is needful for us to believe him. We were to go for introduction. I turned back and traveled back to Abuja. Because I knew we were not supposed to be making that trip. He went ahead, got married to this lady. It was years after. I was preaching in a city and he heard and he took transport and came and met me. And while I finished preaching, I came down. He was lean. And he cried and said, see me. What happened to you? And my wife, I married a witch. I said, okay. But you remember when we told you we couldn't sleep that night. We couldn't sleep that night. Because I knew that my friend was gone. I don't remember. I think we bought 20 computers. I bought 20 computers for then. That, that time, 1.6 million that time. Sent it to his city. And then we went. They did the networking, did everything. We now went to the company that um, supplies the network. So that we can have a subscription channel. And then they will power those systems. I think their bill was 3 million or something. So I now sent the money for the network. And when the money came... The wife arose. And she has a way of knowing when there's money, even though the alert was deleted. There's money. Oh, oh, oh. Before we knew it, all the money for the network had been squandered. That was when I said, we can't continue this project again. Because I fulfilled my promise. But even though I fulfilled it, it did not change its condition. I learned a great lesson. Instead of running after the spiritual, I will camp with the spirit. 
And all these years I come with the Spirit. I never knew I would see visions myself because I was the man of doctrine. And as I began to grow, the glory began to extend from one level to another level. And just in case you saw me in Jalingo, you would think I'm an evangelist. The dimensions of Christ, they manifest. This was the simple Bible teacher in the midst of the people. Tonight, we are going to pray. I received something from Jesus. And what I received from him is packaged in the person of the Holy Spirit. And from that bank, the Lord will distribute this night. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, I can't go beyond this point because of the time. We just began the lecture. And the lecture was supposed to advance. Oh my. Stay with the Holy Ghost. And he will show you what you need to do to come out of poverty. Stay with the Holy Ghost. And he will show you the damsel that will still be ready to walk with you 60 years after marriage. Stay with the Holy Ghost. And he will tell you when, when your secular education has come to an end. Stay with the Holy Ghost. And he will tell you the kind of choices to make that will lead you to that place of destiny. It is written that the part of the church is as a shining light that shineth more and more and more in my life the testimony of the glory that excels must be seen from one level of glory to another level of glory to another level of glory we are changed into another man and people that knew you seven years ago will wonder what happened to this man and we will say it's the Holy Ghost for the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and you shall be changed into another man
thank you for watching do well to subscribe like share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what god is doing from this platform you can also follow us on all our social media platforms we are on instagram we are on facebook and we are on twitter thank you